Thank you very much. And I understand now we are, we are on, so we can, uh, we can start this webinar. Um, good morning, good afternoon uh, to all, because I understand you are all connecting from um, a number of different countries. Um, I know uh, participants are joining from uh, North America, from Europe, of course, from Africa. So dear participants, colleagues and, and friends, thank you so much for joining this high-level conference. We will discuss creative industry, the impact of digital, and how to support a sustainable recovery in Africa. I'm Patrick Gilabert, uh, the head of the UNIDO office in Brussels and the representative to the UNOACPS. And today, I'm glad to facilitate this conference organized in the framework of the 2021 International Year of Creative Economy for Sustainable Development. The United Nations, the, the UN, recognized that creative economy is the most rapidly growing sector of the world economy. In terms of revenue, it generates more than $2 trillion worldwide. So $2 trillion worldwide, which represents 3% of global GDP worldwide. And job creation is 29.5 million jobs around the world. So we can really see the weight and the importance of the creative economy in, uh, in the world and for sustainable development. In Africa and, and in the Middle East, it provides to the region $58 billion and it provides 2.4 million jobs. So we can see the importance of the creative economy. That's why UNIDO, UNCTAD and Sound Diplomacy are working together. Joining forces with important partners from Germany, European Commission and Africa. We will focus on Africa to show best practices in East and West Africa. We will explore the importance of innovation and digital transformation in the creative sector and how they contribute towards the recovery from COVID-19 crisis and the achievement of SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. For you to know, the conference is available in English and French. Vous pouvez donc suivre cette conférence en français aussi. And participants are welcome to ask questions and share comments in a Q&A and chat box. So I'd like to introduce our panelists of this session. And uh, uh, the high-level uh, representative and high-level session will be run by uh, Mrs. Mio Shirotero, Shirotori, the officer in charge of the Division of International Trade and Committees of UNCTAD, by Mr. Bernardo Calzadia Samiento, Managing Director, D Digitalization, Technology and Agribusiness from UNIDO, and Mrs. Frederic Kasher, the head of Division of Media, Culture, Creative Industry, Sports of the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and development. But I would like to start to call Mio uh, for the first statement. Mio, you have the floor. Please, over to you. Thank you very much, Patrick. Merci beaucoup. It is a great honor for UNCTAD to address this very important meeting on digitalizing creative industries with a special focus on Africa. I'd like to thank UNIDO and Sound Diplomacy for the partnership that has made this meeting come true in the framework of the Global Services Forum 2021. Distinguished panelists and participants, the fast-paced technological and social changes are expanding the scope, potential and uptake of the creative industries at the global level. The interdependence between the creative world and the digital world is astoundingly clear. Creative content gives life to the digital world. At the same time, the digital environment enables many of the levers of the creative industry, such as writing, designing, audiovisuals, application software, music, performance art, research and development, among many. In fact, digital technologies and tools 
have transformed the entire cultural value chain from creation to production, distribution, access to the market and participation. And this to an extent has contributed towards inclusive recovery from the COVID-19 crisis. Artists have tuned to digital platforms to connect with audiences and consumers. While digital solutions cannot replace the value and the beauty of a live show, they nevertheless have sustained their living. Distinguished panelists and participants, as connectivity increases in countries, including countries in Africa, the supply of quality content is increasing together with the demand for more creative goods and services. Since the creation of the Creative Economy Program in 2004, ANCTAD has continually supported countries to better understand the economic contribution of the creative industries from the perspective of trade and development. ANCTAD continues to work with countries to engage policymakers, creative entrepreneurs, and other relevant stakeholders to collectively identify a policy framework that works for every creative soul in the country. We also note that the nexus between digitalization and creative economy encompasses new issues such as big data capture and analytics, augmented or virtual reality, artificial intelligence, blockchain, digital marketing, and so on and so forth. All those which are likely to control our economic activities in the coming decades. And on this, ANCTAD is publishing a new research titled The Creative Industries 4.0 to contribute to effective policy making on creative industries through the lens of digitalization. Distinguished panelists and participants, technological advances have created opportunities for all to access global markets for their creativity and the cultural diversity in a way not ever previously possible. Nonetheless, the challenges are immense and should not be underestimated. So I'd like to conclude my remarks here with the assurance that ANCTAD remains committed together with the partners UNIDO and Sound Diplomacy to strengthening creative economies for better, more inclusive and sustainable future. Thank you very much. I now hand back to you, Mr. Patrick Jube. Thank you very much, Mrs. Miyoshirotori. We really value this uh, partnership and this uh, cooperation uh, with UNTAD, and uh, definitely um, we uh, look at the nexus of the creative economy and digital economy as really a very important key to advance for our sustainable development goals. Um, and this partnership, you need UNTAD, is really, really important. I'd like to call on now. Mr. Bernardo Calzadia Samiento, the Managing Director of the Directorate of Dig Digitalization, Technology and Agribusiness in UNIDO. Bernardo, over to you. Uh, bonjour, Patrick. Uh, dear Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Shirutoriu, uh, Ms. Kerha, uh, I am so happy to be uh, here with you. And on behalf of UNIDO, uh, to introduce this uh, webinar, Create, Innovate, Recover. Uh, digitalizing creative industries for a sustainable recovery in Africa, organized in association with ANTA. Uh, Madame Shirotori already uh, started the seminar and sound diplomacy. Uh, we have over the many years having an excellent collaboration with ANTA, uh, and it is a natural response to find another area and thematic area to uh, collaborate in co close complementarity of our mandates that after all are industry and trade. We also welcome sound diplomacy, 
which uses music and culture. And this is a very important new dimension to deliver economic, social, and cultural growth in cities globally. Distinguished panelists and members of the audience, it is important to state that industry consists not only just of factory floors and chimney stacks, but also fashion studios, mixing desks, which can also add considerable value. African creative industries are rich with potential for economic diversification, value addition, technology development, and economic growth. It is thus no surprise that the United Nations declared 2021 as the International Year of Creative Economy for Sustainable Development. The African Continental Free Trade Agreement has also recognized the potential of creative industries promoting innovation, entrepreneurship through the protection of intellectual property rights of African entrepreneurs. According to a 2015 report, the creative industries provided Africa and Middle East region 58 billion US dollars in revenues and 2.4 million to and a half million jobs. And these figures are on the rise. For instance, it is estimated that Nigeria and Nollywood film sector alone employs up to 1 million people, directly and indirectly. Likewise, the entertainment sector in Ghana is forecasted to be worth of 3 billion US dollars by 2023. We are talking business. However, in order to deliver on the transformative potential of creative industries, we must first put in place the building blocks to upscale capacities, particularly digital capacities. We have seen in COVID the importance and relevance of digital transformation, but also the risk of digital uh, divide. In addition, we must cooperate with local partners to address a number of pressing issues, such as implement IP regimes, underdeveloped innovation ecosystems, a lack of regional trade and value chain integration, weak data collection capacities, and last but not least, insufficient investment in a digital infrastructure. To overcome these issues, we need to put in place a comprehensive package of technical cooperation, policy and partnership assistance. We must upscale digital technology access, access to connectivity, and we must build the human resources. We must build these digital skills, particularly for more vulnerable population, for women, for young people. Design agile, dynamic and responsive regulatory frameworks. This is very important. Uh, we must make sure that regulation uh, does not hamper innovation and creativity. Boost statistical capacities and leverage industrial clusters, incubators, accelerators, and spin-off processes. UNIDO has supported the growth and development of creative industries in many countries, recognizing the importance of combining culture with innovation, digital transformation, and entrepreneurship. Partnerships and collaborative approaches are necessary to this end. For instance, together with the EU and Italy, we have developed 13 creative industries clusters in seven southern Mediterranean countries. UNIDO will continue cooperating closely with donors, the UN agencies, national and regional actors, the private sector, creative professionals, and others to enhance their creative economy ecosystem. We look forward to leveraging creative capacities for inclusive, sustainable industrialization, improved trade, poverty eradication, as per our goal number nine uh, of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Thank you so much and wish you wonderful deliberations. Back to you, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you so much for your statement, uh, Bernardo. And indeed, you say it. Um, the uh, creative economy is so important with 2.4 million jobs. Uh, it's, it's really, really important. And uh, that's um, a very important element to achieve, um, as, as we said, the sustainable development goals uh, in the framework of an inclusive and sustainable development. So we have heard from the UN family with UNCTAD, with UNIDO, 
And now we will move on to the EU family with Germany. Uh, so we are so glad to welcome Mrs. Uh, Frederic Karcher, the, the head of Division of Media, Culture, Creative Industries and Sports of the Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development of Germany. Uh, dear Frederic Karcher, you have the floor. Thank you. Merci, Patrick Gilabert, uh, Ms. Shirotori, Mr. Saviento, dear Excellencies, distinguished colleagues in various countries, ladies and gentlemen, um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you for joining our session today. Um, before I start, let me express my gratitude to UNCTAD and UNIDO and Sound Diplomacy for organizing this event at the margins of UNCTAD 15. Um, it comes at a very uh, timely moment, not only because we are currently celebrating the International Year of Creative Economy for Sustainable Development, but also because the interface of creative industries, digitalization, um, and the current um, pandemic context that we have uh, really carry um, possible solutions and relief. So I think um, it's a very important issue uh, to discuss today and I'm delighted to be able to contribute. Let me also say that um, I do have a, a, a small personal link to UNCTAD. Uh, I worked in Geneva at the permanent mission about um, 14 years ago. And I remember very lively debates uh, at the Intergovernmental Committee of UNCTAD. And you may know that our Minister for uh, Economic Cooperation and Development, Dr. Gerd Müller, is currently running uh, for the new Secretary General of UNIDO and was in fact uh, a driving force uh, for us here in Germany to include creative industries in our development cooperation portfolio. It's still relatively new. Uh, we started cooperation about uh, three years ago. So I would like to share with you a few of the reasons why we consider this a very important topic and important sector uh, in the context of development cooperation, what we see as challenges and what we actually do. So we've already heard that um, we are really dealing with a future market here with high growth rates. And um, just to give you a few examples, or actually it's in this case, it's just one example, but there are many countries that could be listed. Um, but I, I picked Nigeria because I think we will have colleagues from Nigeria on the panel later on. In Nigeria, the music industry uh, is growing with an annual rate of 13.4%. That's quite impressive. The film production in Nigeria is the second largest uh, after Bollywood, that means larger than Hollywood. <laughs> and the film industry um, contributes more to the national GDP than, for example, um, the agricultural sector. And we need more of these messages to go out there, not just to ministers of culture, but to ministers of finance and economy. Those are the ones we need to reach to put uh, corresponding um, policies in place. Um, the sector also attract, attracts international investments. Um, let me just name a few universal music, Sony, Netflix. Uh, uh, luckily, we, uh, there, there are uh, increasingly more um, films from Africa that are shared worldwide. So we have platforms to actually share these wonderful creations with the world much more so than only a few years ago. Another very good reason is that um, the creative industries uh, create jobs and income, especially for women and young people, young entrepreneurs, so very important um, target groups of development cooperation. Um, so in many of our partner countries, mainly women are involved in the creative industries. And in Africa, actually one fifth of the young population of the young labor force is uh, engaged in the creative industries. Then, of course, the sector is a driver of innovation and an incubator for the labor force of tomorrow. Um, I want to uh, name one word, and that is cross-innovation and spillover effects into classical um, economic areas. Because very often, young cre uh, creative entrepreneurs, they find solutions for current challenges, and they turn them into new business models. Uh, for example, video on demand as answer to 
a lack of movie theaters um, or and the fact that most people actually do almost everything via their mobile um, telephones. Uh, then offering gaming um, uh, services in schools to be as close to um, real life and, uh, and practical experiences as possible, or to also use crowdfunding um, for, uh, to finance new products. This also leads me to my, the next issue that is uh, that it contributes to digital transformation, which is really at the core of our topic today. Um, and the creative industries really uh, fosters digital transformation. Um, for example, virtual reality is used for online showrooms um, in the fashion industry. And another uh, very important issue, that's the last one I will, I will name here, um, but I think one that is crucial is that it really is a mirror of the continent of opportunity when we speak about Africa. And that is so important. We need the good news from Africa. Uh, it is not just crises, conflict, um, and catastrophe, but it really uh, is a country of opportunity, very creative, self-confident, with a very strong young labor force. And I think we need to consider creativity as a resource, like any other resource, like Coltane, any other resource, and it needs to be treated and traded in the same way, meaning we also need fair labor standards, fair wages, in the creative industries. So we, I would also like to call for uh, a fair culture movement. And Germany has worked on this issue together with the German National Commission of UNESCO. Um, we are currently in the, in the process of uh, working on a study on this topic, how to bring together the creative sector with the fair trade movement. And for these aspects, uh, we need partners like the EU because they are much broader than um, just um, the scope that one country can actually address. Address. So we need the EU. We need. Um, we need to go on a on a higher level, which is why we welcome this session so much. So hopefully, by the end of today's session, we will um, have uh, new ways and and avenues for cooperation between the national EU, but also, of course, UN level. Of course, there are challenges. You have mentioned a few um, training with practical um, uh, uh, with practical exercises is very important. Infrastructure, places where culture and creativity can actually be produced. Um, access to finance is another issue. Uh, intellectual property, very important. One thing is to produce creative and cultural goods. The other then is to actually make money with them. And then, of course, uh, you need to consider intellectual property rights uh, and, and uh, make sure that the funds go to the, to the right person. And we need uh, corresponding government policies, tax rebates, incentives for investments. Um, and that's why we do not get tired of saying we need to bring in the ministers of economy and finance to actually acknowledge this future market and, uh, and act upon that. Uh, let me close by just um, highlighting what we actually do, German uh, Development Corporation. Um, we have a, um, a project that is engaged in six countries currently in Africa and the Middle East. Uh, in Africa, we're engaged in Kenya, uh, Senegal, South Africa, and uh, we also work with um, Iraq, Jordan, and Lebanon. Uh, we have a new a unique cooperation of GIZ, German International Corporation, and the Goethe Institute. So we bring together um, one institute that is very well connected on the create level of the creative scene with um, development uh, um, partners and development uh, cooperation. And of course, we support training, um, we strengthen entrepreneurship, uh, we give marketing support. Um, another very important issue to improve the service offers for the industry. So business service organizations, the lobby for the whole sector needs to be strengthened. And of course, the formalization of the sector, that's, that's actually also another uh, big challenge. During Corona, we actually um, uh, increased our funds to strengthen resilience for uh, our, the, co the companies and the partners we work with um, and offered a mix of grants and additional training with a specific focus on digital skills. Uh, and I could go on, there are many more specific um, uh, examples we have, uh, we work with the animation sector in South Africa, which includes a lot of uh, digital instruments with the Fakugesi African Digital Innovation Festival there, 
So uh, we really try to bring these two aspects together. I don't want to go on too long, so I will come to an end here, but let me say that we are very open to, um, to taking our cooperation uh, to the next level, so to say, and work closely with the EU, um, UN, but also, of course, other uh, bilateral donors and partners. Thank you, and back to you, Patrick. Merci beaucoup, uh, Frédérica Scherf. Thank you, Dankeschön. Uh, for this uh, statement and uh, so many ideas of uh, partnership and uh, cooperation. Indeed, the creative economy is um, the opportunity to, to connect with so many entities. You mentioned Ministry of Culture, which should be uh, connected with uh, and which would, should work with the Ministry of Economy and Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Industry. And already here um, in this session, we see so many uh, relations and connection uh, within the, the UN, uh, as we said, UNIDO and UNCTAD, and, and of course, uh, the other uh, UN entities uh, within the 27 um, EU member states and Germany. Um, and we will hear from the European Commission. And of course, uh, as you said, uh, that's really true, uh, we need uh, to get good news from Africa. And good news from Africa, we will receive plenty of good news uh, from the panelists, I'm sure, because we have uh, such a large uh, and wide uh, um, uh, panelists um, available uh, this, um, this morning um, uh, from uh, East and West Africa. But before we hear from the panelists, I'd like to introduce my friend and colleague, Alejandro. Alejandro is executive officer um, of the Directorate of Dig Dig Digitalization, uh, Technology and Agribusiness of, um, of UNIDO. And Alejandro, so we are eager to see your presentation because I understand you will present uh, creative industries with very concrete examples uh, in countries such as in Ethiopia, Armenia, Tunisia and Cuba. And Cuba uh, UNIDO worked in the field of music industry. So, Alejandro, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick. I will share my screen. Yeah, everybody can see my screen, no? Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much. As uh, I have been very uh, excited hearing all, all the um, uh, distinguished uh, speakers and uh, in, in the press session and the opening. And uh, I would like to just uh, provide a very brief overview of, of creative industry context in, in Africa, how digitalization can contribute to boost uh, productivity, uh, but also regional development, etc. I will talk, as Patrick mentioned, on some selected experiences and, and uh, what uh, we should go in the, in the future where we should go. Okay, uh, just a, a brief overview. Yeah, uh, most of us has here or have a, an opinion on what is a creative industry. There are several uh, uh, definitions provided by UNESCO, UNTAG, WIPO, etc. But they all have uh, some, some aspects in common and, and we see creative industries as a commodities, as, as a value chain, where we uh, include their uh, trade, labor and productivity. Yeah? And, and uh, these are all part of a knowledge-based economic activities upon which uh, the creative industries are, are based. Um, on the other side, it composes several subsectors, and uh, particularly what, what is uh, bringing a lot of attention is the possibility on, on the job creation, on the, on the amount of jobs that is currently involving uh, worldwide with the figures that uh, we have been hearing from the previous speakers. One aspect that is very relevant for also for the creative industry is that and if you compare, for example, the, the share with the global economy, they are even higher than the agriculture, which uh, provides us a, a good hint to where we should also invest our efforts yeah, for developing countries in particular. On the other side, the digital economy is, is also uh, providing a lot of, of, of uh, uh, let's say, importance uh, in order to, to, to reach uh, really how we can distribute this, this uh, amount of, of revenues. This is also something that is challenging at the same time. 
for Africa in particular, there is, a, as I mentioned, there is a, an untapped economic potential, particularly considering all, all the different developments in Nigeria, South Africa, in many countries, Kenya, etc., around, around the entire continent. Uh, however, there are still challenges, as, as we mentioned before, particularly uh, so Saharan African market is still poorly structured with and cultural goods are largely provided through the informal economy, yeah, which uh, is employing more than, than half a million people and generates at the same time uh, 4.2 billion in revenues. So the formal creative industry has uh, also suffered from lack of access to capital, in, in, in many countries in, and this needs to be changed. Yeah? And there are some steps that has been doing uh, from, from the some regional organizations, but also UN organizations, um, particularly with the EU support, with, with other uh, partners, international partners, we, we can uh, try to move ahead in order to really achieve the inclusive and sustainable development of, of these creative industries. More particularly, if we see there are some common strengths yeah, that the uh, African uh, creative industries uh, can provide yeah, at, this, at this moment, uh, we all know that they are very rich in, in the cultural uh, aspects and also there is an increasing connectivity at this moment. Innovation is, is uh, really spreading around the entire continent with several uh, uh, innovation labs uh, and, and other initiatives for startups, etc. At the same time, there are several challenges, particularly regarding informality, as I mentioned, uh, inconsistent approaches to IPR. This is a very challenging topic and, and uh, any intervention should consider that one. At the same time, uh, opportunities, yes, uh, a lot of them, particularly the single digital market uh, that is being discussed within the AFTA, uh, agreement is, is something that provides a lot of uh, opportunities for the future and uh, capacity building activities. These are things that uh, or elements that could really help. One aspect related to trade, uh, to fair trade. So we see here uh, a potential for improving policy and, and the regulatory framework, particularly re regarding standards and, and regulations. This, this can also help not to uh, stop the development of the, of the uh, industry, but to boost uh, innovation and, and creativity in a proper way, but also trying to rescue the informal market. When we talk about uh, digitalization of creative industry, there is a, a and a spread of, of new technologies coming to result in the, the market already, particularly if we see, for example, blockchain is impacting on how even uh, the artists can, can manage their own finances or their uh, revenues or from the work that they are doing. These are disrupted uh, technologies that are impacting heavily on, on the system. For example, artificial intelligence or virtual reality and augmented reality can alter the content consumption uh, perception now. It's, it's, uh, there is also a, a lot of uh, things uh, ongoing with, with 3D printing from some time already uh, for developing new prototypes in less times, et cetera, and, but particularly for art, for design uh, improvements. At the same time, there are several aspects that we need to consider here when we talk about digital transformation of creative industries. We are talking about data, and, and this is something that we, we need to assess. Uh, and, and particularly, most of the countries, uh, they have a very poor, uh, in Africa particularly, and, and other regions in the developing world, they have a poor system of uh, statistics uh, to capture particularly the uh, creative industry sector. So this is a, a, an area where we need to, to work more. Uh, education provides a lot of uh, opportunities, particularly for improving digital skills associated to the new technologies, et cetera. 
innovation and business. Uh, well, uh, several platforms are, has been established within, even within the continent. Then we have value creation, environment, and quality infrastructure. As I mentioned, standards can also play an important role. Then I uh, just wanted to add here that uh, there are also other, uh, let's say, not, not so uh, recent uh, approaches, but uh, can also provide a, a good hint on, on how the sector should be moving, particularly considering more uh, how to linkage uh, local cluster with global buyers. And this is an opportunity within the AFTA trade that uh, we, we cannot miss. And also, if we consider now how to, to boost or, or to establish innovation clusters with uh, considering more the market dynamics and the social impacts as, as the main drivers. There is also from our side, from UNIDO, we have a, a, a concept around uh, how to boost uh, cluster integrations. Yeah, and particularly not uh, considering anymore uh, less the sectoral focus rather than to uh, regional integration where we can uh, interact uh, together. We can put together uh, sectors like uh, agri-food with tourists and, and creative cultural industries in order to foster what we call it the uh, cross uh, fertilization of innovation between them. And, and to uh, improve the national, uh, regional, uh, regulatory framework, etc. I just want to uh, comment very quickly on, on some selected examples we have. Uh, we recently, from UNIDO, we launched uh, a creative uh, hub in Ethiopia, the first one equipped with, with uh, digital uh, equipment like 3D printing machines, laser cutters, etc. And, and with this, this uh, creative hoop has uh, like three main uh, elements. One is to support uh, creative innovators, uh, particularly designers and MCs in, in micro, small and medium sized enterprises on how to, to connect with, with uh, markets, but also to improve the youth uh, innovators, etc. It's also conceived as a sort of platform where uh, several companies and also part of the innovation ecosystem uh, stakeholders uh, can be connected and uh, to provide a, a wide range of services, including uh, workshops, training, but also prototyping, uh, pilot experiences, et cetera. We, I would like also to bring here uh, the case of Tunisia where we have uh, a similar uh, creative hooks established there. But uh, what is important here is that we can also link it, not uh, the intervention only to the, to the market side, but also on the cultural and, and how to protect the digital heritage yeah? uh, with, with uh, this uh, type of interventions. Uh, the other case is uh, from Armenia, and this one is, is for the textile sector. And, and uh, within this one, for example, we wanted to uh, strengthen the digital design uh, for, for uh, product, preparing new products so for new concepts, which are more sustainable with the environment, for example. But also at the same time, uh, we uh, are uh, providing them with uh, better capacities for e-commerce. Last but not least is an example of a project uh, of, of in the music industry in Cuba. Uh, we have uh, supported uh, several stakeholders along the value chain of, of the music industry in the country uh, with our partners from Sound Diplomacy. They also participated in this one with us. And uh, we have provided several, I mean, access to several digital technologies that allow them to improve uh, the, um, the, the uh, products, but also to enter into the digital market, which is uh, through platforms that uh, were not accessible at the country at that time. On the partnerships and common priorities, I, I would like to highlight again, as, as some of the speakers already commented uh, on the potential of, of, of uh, EU 
engagement in, in this type of action. Uh, for us, it's, a, it's an important actor, and particularly we see uh, some common elements uh, for this type of approach that uh, where uh, the EU experience can, can be uh, uh, a very valuable, uh, particularly on, on, on the establishing of creative hubs and clusters, on, on promoting digital entrepreneurship and skills, but at the same time for technology transfer, innovation, uh, partnerships, and, and most uh, particularly on regulatory framework, how to improve uh, standards and, and regulation disseminations on, and adoption in, in the countries uh, is, is the most. At the same time, from the African side, uh, we see a lot of uh, common uh, commonalities here, and particularly uh, with, with the digital transformation strategy for Africa adopted by the African Union, where uh, they see uh, a lot of, or they provide a lot of importance to the IPR and also to the heritage of, of culture. Yeah, but at the same time, uh, the use of, of digital technologies for production and exhibition of cultural industry products are very well recognized in, in the African Union plan of action. And uh, yeah, and the AFTA, as I mentioned before, is, is uh, one of the greatest opportunities that we have to advance uh, the uh, inclusive and sustainable development of uh, creative industries. So on the way forward, I would like just to, <clears throat> to provide some, some ideas here. Uh, from UNIDO side, we understand that uh, uh, there are several opportunities and challenges or barriers that we need to overcome if we really want, want to uh, take uh, the contribution of, of creative industries for job creation, uh, for uh, an inclusive and sustainable local or regional development. And, using the opportunities of, of digital transformation. So for that, we, we see very important if, if we can uh, do several steps uh, in order to, uh, let's say, uh, including all these elements, mapping the creative industries, strengthen tools and, and institutions, promote the creative innovation ecosystem of, uh, of the industries uh, related to, to the clusters and also building skills and, and last but not least, uh, the foster of IPR regulatory framework, for example, is, is uh, an action point where we can go. More in general, and this is my last slide, is, is uh, we say that there are two main areas where we will need to work uh, together uh, with all the partners and, and particularly to promote uh, uh, so regional or regional integration of strategies of policies on all the partners, uh, statistics, uh, the uh, regulations and standards, etc. Uh, on the other side, the other area is, is to strengthen the creative uh, industry ecosystem. Yeah, by uh, adopting several maybe some some uh, areas or action points here, like uh, to realize the commercialization of, of the creative goods, uh, to uh, provide uh, opportunities for cross fertilization of innovation between economic actors, uh, but also to promote uh, tra technology transfer and adoption of innovation skills, etc. This could help us not only to impact on, on the SDG 9, as, as my director mentioned it, but also on all their SDGs, uh, which are very relevant as well for the creative industries, uh, like uh, number eight, this uh, in work and economic growth. Gender equality is, is also an aspect where we can uh, touch here a lot and uh, the 11 on sustainable cities and communities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alejandro. Thank you so much. Uh, the examples you provided are really interesting because we, we can see the impact. We can see that these are concrete achievements with concrete results. Um, myself, I went to Armenia and I, I, I saw in, in Armenia 
the, uh, the uh, project for the fashion industry and we really see the impact uh, that project um, has on the fashion industry. So I'd like to hand over now to uh, Shane Shapiro, the uh, CEO of Sound Diplomacy. Um, I, will, I will share my screen and Shane, you can uh, take over from this point uh, with the panel. Over to you, Shane. Great. Uh, thank you, Patrick. Uh, thank you to all the, um, the excellent um, speakers who've come before. Thank you, Alejandro, for the great presentation. Uh, so my name is Shane Shapiro. I, I run Sound Diplomacy. We work globally with cities and governments on music uh, and entertainment strategy and policy. Thank you so much to UNIDO and UNCTAD as part of, as well, the International Year um, Creative um, Economy for uh, hosting this event. So we have uh, an amazing panel. So could everyone on the panel please um, turn, on their, turn on their video? So I can see you, <laughs> that would be lovely. Um, and I'm just noticing the time, so I'm going to try to get through this, but just to our wonderful panel, if you go over time, I will interrupt you. Uh, just saying, um, everyone has a few, so we just wanna make sure that we end on time. And we're gonna try to host, have a, a bit of a discussion as well, rather than just everyone each speaking. So I just want everyone to very quickly introduce themselves because I think you'd probably be better introducing yourself than I would introducing you. So first, um, M, and then Maureen, and then Chi, and then uh, Maria Chiara, and then George. Please uh, just quickly introduce yourself and then we'll get into some questions. M, you're, you're muted. Yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, first of all, let me say thank you so much um, to UNIDO, um, UNCD TAD, and um, Sound Diplomacy for this wonderful panel and the invitation um, to speak on it. My name is M. Ekong, um, and I'm here representing the Lagos Culture Recovery Task Force, which is a co collaboration of, uh, of um, private public and civil society organizations in Lagos, Nigeria, that have come together to support and develop a post-COVID music recovery plan for Lagos. Um, that's me. Thanks, Shane. Mm -hmm. and, and Maureen. Thank you very much, the organizers, for inviting me on behalf of my organization, the African Regional Intellectual Property Organization, ARIPO which is a member state driven organization. And also it has uh, 20 member states. My name is uh, Maureen Fondo. I handle the copyright portfolio. I'm the head of copyright and related rights. And uh, we are glad to be here. Aripo administers the mandates on intellectual property. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. And Chi? Hope okay, I pronounced that right. Everyone. Yes, you did. <laughs> hi, everyone. My name is Chi Omoka. I'm the founder of uh, Fabrics NG. So at Fabrics NG, we're focused on making quality fabric sourcing easier and more efficient for fashion and creative brands that use textiles in their production for their manufacturing. So our core mission is to grow local textile and fashion manufacturing by providing support to especially um, emerging and independent designers. Maria Chiara. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And first of all, thank you to uh, the organizers, UNIDO and UNCTAD, for this very timely and uh, appropriate discussion for the poets of the topic and uh, for inviting us. Um, and also thanks to Shane and Sound Diplomacy. Happy to, to be here uh, with you uh, after many occasions where we have already cooperated. Uh, I represent the European Commission, DG EAC, Education and Culture, and in particular, D1 Unit on Cultural Policies. I am specifically in charge of the topic of uh, cultural heritage and sustainable development. And I'm happy to be in this discussion because it's really linked to uh, one of my main um, areas of work in this field, particularly leading one uh, in OMC group, an open method.
sort of coordination working group of member states on the topic of the cultural dimension in sustainable development. So I, I will really appreciate um, this exchange. And the other area, um, just to introduce you briefly, um, my, my field, uh, where um, I work on is the one on research for cultural heritage. So it's a, it's a horizontal topic that we deal with in our unit, but it's very much, um, let's say, uh, cross-cutting issue for which we cooperate with other services in the Commission and particularly with uh, research and innovation. So this is also very linked to um, parts of the points that were discussed in the first presentation. So I'm very happy about that. Thank you. Great. And last but not least, George. Well, thank you, Shane. Shapiro for uh, inviting uh, my participation. Thank you, colleagues. My name is George Gashara. I am here representing uh, Heva Fund. Heva Fund is uh, one of the leading uh, investment firms in Africa, uh, specializing in creative uh, industries. Um, we have uh, three operations. One is investments. Uh, we've made investments in over 100 businesses uh, covering, uh, we began in Kenya, co we covered five countries in the region, and now we are making, uh, we are, we're moving capital to 14 countries in the Eastern board of Africa. And uh, hopefully soon, um, within a short period, maybe we'll be able to do most of the continent. We also uh, provide direct business support to creative and culture businesses. Um, and we also lead in uh, uh, knowledge creation um, and, and research services. Um, I'm glad to be here and, um, and, and I'm also glad to uh, listen and learn from my colleagues uh, from around the continent. Great, thank you. An incredibly diverse uh, panel. Um, just as the moderator, if anyone has a question, just put it into the Q&A box or raise your hand. I'm moderating or looking at the Q&A box. Uh, so if the question, you know, I may just interrupt our panelists and go to the audience question, you never know. But uh, please, um, you know, this is about you guys as much as it's about us, okay? So I'm, I've got a couple questions for each of you, but, you know, let's see if we can, uh, we can have a bit of a, a conversation around this. So I'm gonna start with M and, you know, uh, I know that you also work in Ghana uh, and the UK uh, and Nigeria, but can you kind of, you know, explain what the, you know, the activities of both your work in Lagos and in Ghana, which I know is very similar, what, what's, what's the point of it, frankly, uh, and how do you feel that you, you know, and how do you feel that kind of your, you can utilize digital technologies um, to... Okay accelerate the, you know, the development of the creative industries, or in this case, music that you're working on in, in um, Lagos and Accra and other places? Well, thank you very much, Shane, again, for the um, introduction. I'll probably start a little bit um, about talking about the work with the Lagos Culture Recovery um, Task Force and then contextualize it into the, the wider West Africa market. As you said um, earlier, I, I run an organization called Urban Inclusion Community. I'm Nigerian diaspora. My company started in 2006 in London. And um, during the 2012 Olympics, we ran a big event around how we support the diaspora community, support and invest in their, in their um, local communities. And um, obviously one of the hugest sectors of opportunities around creative industries. Um, but after that 2012 event, one of the things that captured my imagination and my drive was we ended up opening representative offices in both Lagos and Accra um, to specifically drive um, local development, local economic development and business development programs. So effectively in uh, 2020, um, 2020 in, the, you know, in the midst of our awful pandemic, we, we set up the, the Lagos Cultural Recovery um, Task Force, which is actually um, a network, a collaborative partnership made up of um, Temple Management Company, which is a, is a Lagos based music industry support agency, which supports artists, musicians, and entertainment sector through training, capacity building, business development, and support. 
um, organizations and social research. Um, we've also had fantastic support. Shane, your team, thank you so much. Sound Diplomacy and Center for Music Ecosystems have also provided a tremendous amount of support to us to kind of build momentum and to build our goals around what it is we want to do post COVID-19 and create a recovery plan for, for Lagos, particularly focused on musicians. There are, similar, there, are, there are similar situations in both Lagos and Accra, being at the heart of West Africa. I think we all, we all know, and, and many of our presenters have also stated very clearly, there is so much potential, potential in Lagos. And this word potential is something that as a diaspora drives me mad because we want to see this potential actualized because the richness that you have in both cities like Lagos and cities like Accra is, is tremendous. And this is where we have jumped on the opportunity to look at, okay, how do we work better with states? How do we work better with local communities in order to drive development for, 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 um, for the sector? So, um, excuse me. Um, so basically our main goals of the Alliance are to advocate, communicate and support the development of a more impactful music ecosystem. Building Thanks. on data, and we've heard already, data, data, data. I don't think I'm gonna be the only person that mentions it. I'm sure we've had it heard it all already, but that's one of our biggest challenges that you're gonna have in both in, in West Africa. And we've heard even Alexandra saying that there are programs that they can mention that happen in the northern part of Africa, southern Africa, great, inter, um, great interventions, but we don't have as much, we don't see as much. I think it's probably better to say visibility is not as much in, say, sub-Saharan Africa, yeah. but there is a richness there that is, is, is quite incredible, and we want to create tangible solutions that support job creation and entrepreneurship within this sector. Yeah, I, you know, it's a great kind of segue uh, to, to you, Maureen. Um, you know, I, you know, I, I met um, a, a couple of colleagues from Lagos came to London and one of them had a t-shirt that said Lagos Entertainment Capital of Africa. And, you know, I can't disagree with that. And then he's like, we're the same as London and LA, you know, we're a global entertainment capital. And that's true. But one of the things that is lacking in some regards is the recognition uh, in the same way of um, intellectual property rights, and um, and you know Alejandro saying or or Patrick saying that the creative economies were three percent of the global economy, I think it's worth more than that if we actually counted everything. So I'm curious, uh, Maureen, if you could kind of dig into the the work that you guys do in relation to the socio-economic and cultural developments of the states that you work in, and kind of how a repo is is working to develop the, the role of intellectual property um, and digital technologies uh, in, in, the, in the 20 countries that you're working in. Oh, and you're muted. Thank you very much, uh, Shapiro. As uh, alluded earlier, ARIPO is an intergovernmental organization and uh, we are a member state driven organization. Currently, there are 20 member states who are spread from the southern, east, central, and west African countries. And we also have uh, potential member states of which uh, amongst the potential we have Nigeria and uh, South Africa. So um, as a repo, we receive mandates, and these mandates are with regard to intellectual property. And uh, we have uh, protocols that is the legal framework which uh, enable us to implement the mandates given unto us by the member states. And uh, we have uh, um, the Harare protocol for patents and industrial um, designs and utility models. We also have the Banju protocol for trademarks. And uh, we have also the Arusha protocol for plant varieties. And we have the Swakomon protocol for traditional knowledge and expressions and cultural expressions. And uh, we also have uh, the latest uh, protocol uh, that is the Kampala protocol on voluntary registration of copyright and related rights. So with these legal frameworks, uh, we are able uh, 
to facilitate uh, the pooling resources together for our member states benefit. But we go beyond our member states and also engage the potential member states in our activities. So uh, it has been said by previous speakers about the creative sector that it contributes to wealth and also job creation. And uh, there are a lot of evidence which uh, uh, goes with that. We see also in the WIPO studies within the ARIPO member states, we have a few countries who have undertaken such, uh, such study with the assistance of WIPO. And uh, uh, they actually, we have um, Kenya, we have Malawi, we have Botswana, and we have Tanzania. And uh, from, from these ones, we see that uh, the contribution to GDP ranges from three point to five point uh, percent. Uh, like Botswana, it goes uh, 5.46. Uh, uh, so uh, all these are things which show that indeed creative um, uh, economy can uh, really uh, drive uh, the uh, countries. But due to the COVID that uh, all of us experienced, it uh, plummeted the economy and uh, there was the social fabric uh, turn which was torn apart and also it affected a lot of creative sectors. But we thank the ingenuity of these creative minds, how they came about to circumvent all this and they used the digital uh, technologies which were available. So having this, uh, we see that they could connect with their they could connect with their fans, whether if it's on the video or if it's on the uh, audio streams or uh, if it was on the live performances and uh, selling out of um, maybe artworks uh, through digital platforms and even enabling people to visit these digital platforms uh, for the museums, maybe just to see the exhibitions and all that as much as it went to make uh, some people lose their jobs and others uh, trying to, you know, uh, uh, come up with other ways of, um, of living. So as, uh, as a repo, we, we thank uh, most of the member states governments who came out and supported the creative sectors because uh, of uh, what they were experiencing, not being able to, uh, not being able to receive the maybe usual also royalties that, uh, that they have, that they used to receive due to the maybe closure of theaters or uh, even on uh, cinemas and the like. So uh, knowledge-based economy, we all look at it as uh, accelerating development. And uh, it is encouraging to see that in the constitutions of some of the African countries acknowledge intellectual uh, property by having provisions within the constitution that speak to it. And uh, this shows uh, the political will within the ARIPO member states and the African countries that we need, we need that political will to yeah. change our situation. So yeah. revenue generation, job creation, and a lot of reports have come up giving out ideas on how best we can be able to circumvent all these challenges and take advantage of the digital opportunities within this era. Thank yeah. you very much. No, no, no. Thank, thank you, Maureen. And, and we always say, I come from the music industry, so you know, um, you know, a song can be a pension, right? That's very important to think. Uh, it, it creates mailbox money, money that just arrives in the mail. Um, but uh, Chi, um, I, I know nothing about fashion other than I appreciate it, but it's uh, incredible what you're doing um, it, with Fabrics NG. And I'm just curious kind of how you're using, um, you know, digital technologies to improve fabric sourcing and you know understanding kind of how that uh inter you know how digitization is impacting um you know african textiles and the fashion business and and the growth um and opportunities that are coming up from recovery and, and post-covid 
Oh, thank you, Shane. Um, I hope everyone can hear me now. I heard my speaker was a bit rusty. So as I mentioned earlier, our core mission at Fabrics NG is to grow local textile and fashion manufacturing by providing support to emerging and independent designers. So you may wonder why is that a big deal and does it really matter how fabric is being sourced? Well, fabric sourcing is basically how your fabric is obtained and as a creative or fashion brand is integral to your design process or your general value chain. So to minimize production inefficiencies, you have two major fabric sourcing problems to contend with. The first major problem is knowledge of the required fabric to bring your creative ideas to life. So surprisingly, we discovered that fabric education was a huge barrier to efficiency in fabric consumption. So things such as knowing the fiber comp um, composition, fabric behavior to dyes, heat, thermal response, structure of the garment after construction, durability of the garment, functionality, et cetera, that sort of thing. So understanding fabrics is super important to your continued success as a fashion brand. Then the second major problem after determining the type of fabric you actually need for production is the actual sourcing. So that is knowing available and accessible fabric sourcing suppliers or manufacturing. So considering the annual billions spent in sub-Saharan Africa on apparel and fabrics, so it's unbelievable that there is no organized infrastructure for fabric sourcing. We only have very disorganized um, informal markets that make fabric sourcing very cumbersome and time consuming and frankly expensive. So for fabric sourcing to make any business sense, it must be sourced in one, a cost effective manner. So that means that both the, the pricing, the quality, the logistics cost, it must make financial sense so that you're able to compete effectively in the global fashion market, right? And then the second is that it must be sourced in a timely manner. So that means that your delivery lead time should make sense. And then again, it should be sourced in an ethical, sustainable manner that doesn't conflict with your company values. So to solve these problems, our solution at Fabrics NG involved digitalization of that fabric sourcing value chain. We started first with online fabric education. So that digital breakdown of the fabric. So for you to understand what the fabric, the fiber composition is, the fabric characteristics and behavior. So we provide online fabric consultation and physical swatches and samples where necessary or requested. Then the second is um, networking of people by designing a structured marketplace for thousands of verified fabric suppliers that are selling these fabrics at competitive pricing to um, the designers that require them. And then the next is, of course, progressive automation of the entire sourcing value chain to make it more cost effective, timely, data driven, and seamless. And then finally, of course, increasing individualization using sustainable and cost effective solutions like uh, providing fabric customization using more eco friendly dyes. And then our proposed um, digital textile printers, which use less water and energy and creates less waste in general. Thank you very much. It's, I, I personally find it incredibly fascinating, but it's so important. Again, it's, it, you know, really understanding um, how to digitize, how to improve sourcing, frankly, uh, of any, of any resource um, makes it more sustainable. And so, Marie, it's a, a, a bit of a, a, you know, now we're turning back to Europe for a second with, with you, Maria Chiara, and um, I, I've been very lucky to, you know, work with your team for many years, um, full of amazing people uh, at AAC, um, Education and Culture, and um, one of your programs is Music Moves Europe. Uh, and one of the things is, is Europe has kind of doubled down on culture um, in, in the most recent budget and also doubled down on the SDGs and sustainability. And um, I know you cover a lot of different things, um, but I'm kind of curious if you could just, you know, go through a little bit of, of the measures that AAC has taken to engage recovery. Um, what you think, you know, some of the most effective measures have been, and then, you know, linking it a little bit to the work that you guys are doing with um, you know, uh, thir third countries or, you know, African countries um, across the creative industries. Okay, I'm trying to, to be condensed, although it's a large topic. Uh, as you said correctly, uh, we have doubled down the budget for culture in many respects. Uh, first of all, we have uh, increased indeed of 50% uh, the budget of Creative Europe. And for the next 
seven years, Creative Europe will have a budget of uh, 2.5 nearly billion euros. This is one of the uh, biggest achievements of, of the recent months and of the engagement towards the cultural sector. Uh, coupling, let's say, the efforts that we were already um, committed to before the pandemic with the recovery measures and the support that we gave towards the sector, the sector in many respects during the pandemic. Uh, and I would like to stress in this sense that uh, we believe that, of course, uh, there is a need, and that's why we uh, acted in this way for increased uh, budget lines and uh, availability of uh, funding uh, from Europe, but also that the work that we have done during this month to facilitate uh, the sector towards, for example, a number of calls that have been postponed in terms of deadlines or that have been uh, retargeted uh, to specific needs of the sector and also the dialogue that we have incentivated with the sector. For example, I would like to mention uh, something that goes also very much in line with the needs of the sector that we consider uh, more and more linked to also issues that have to do with the sustainability uh, and also with the contribution of the sector to sustainable development goals. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, we have um, set up this new um, a collaboration platform among member states, this uh, expert group that is focusing primarily on better ways to integrate cultural policies into the sustainable development strategies. So this sort of sectorial dialogue, but also uh, intergovernmental dialogue that we have facilitated as commission, uh, which has led us also to add a priority in the work plan for culture. Um, this was ahead of the COVID pandemic, but it uh, fell as very, very timely and appropriate. Uh, this priority is called culture as a driver for sustainable development. So as you said, we are also doubling our effort in this direction. Uh, and uh, speaking of uh, digital needs, uh, we are trying to also mainstream uh, these aspects in many actions um, across different programs. So, for example, I work on, on research domain linked to culture. Uh, the new Horizon Europe program is also uh, very encouraging for the culture and creative uh, industries and sectors because it has included an additional um, pillar, let's say, area of intervention under cluster two, uh, which is the cooperative research pillar for industrial competitiveness and we have specifically also increased the budget of research for culture and creativity by uh, adding this intervention area in cluster two which is called uh, research and innovation for uh, culture and creative industries and for cultural heritage. And within this, we have uh, included topics that have a lot to do with the um, facilitating and the researching on uh, the needs and on the capacity of the sector for uh, using digital technologies, also green technologies, and combining, let's say, uh, the focus on uh, the digital transition and ways to help the sector to adapt uh, and to exchange uh, partnerships and research um, focuses on, on digitization as much as on sustainability. So um, to summarize, I would say that our efforts went in both the direction of reinforcing the financial envelopes and on creating platforms and more, uh, let's say, opportunities also horizontally for, for the sector. Uh, and one of these actions that I also wanted to emphasize uh, is the creation of a platform which is called Creatives Unite, um, which is the result of um, a combined, um, let's say, funding from uh, um, Creative Europe, but also uh, funding coming from the sector. So it's uh, it's not not owned by the Commission, but it's been facilitated by the Commission and it's been created in cooperation with the sector. So this role of leveraging the potential uh, and the capacity building of the sector towards uh, the digital realm uh, is also done through our means of creating and helping 
supporting the creation of, of platforms like this Creatives Unite, which is working very well because it uh, gives the opportunity uh, to yep. create partnerships and, and to mutually uh, cooperate uh, online uh, among professionals, about, among creatives, uh, among artists. And this is also, of course, um, a tool that goes hand in hand with our uh, longer uh, originated cooperation with uh, third countries. Um, and particularly as far as Africa is concerned, uh, actions like Music, Music Moves Europe or ACP cultural cooperation programs in which we have a specific window, windows and, and projects uh, which have also used the HEVA fund that has been mentioned uh, earlier yeah. and uh, our capacity of, uh, of programs to uh, invest on diversity, on talent, or on, di on um, creativity right. and innovation okay. uh, towards um, the market of the African culture and creative so, industries is, is part of the strategy. Of great, the strategy. You, you've, you've given me a great, uh, you know, segue, Rikaris, um, on to you, George. And, you know, my, for uh, what I get from, from the European Commission, you know, it's investment and collaboration right? Investment and collaboration. Those are the two main things, money and working together. But um, when we talk about money, what, what are you, you know, you're the one, uh, George, you're the one investing in companies. So what are you looking for, first off? And how do you, you know, how do you measure, um, uh, you know, where to simply put your, put your investments? Um, and, you know, and what are you looking for in relation to Ado you know, adopting digital technologies and the types of companies that you're keen to prioritize uh, at the head of them. Thank you. Um, those are three uh, heavy questions. I know, and you have five minutes, so, you know, go for it. That, that all could invite um, a, a, a public lecture in and of itself. So I'll, I'll try and be concise. Um, I, I really won't emphasize what my colleagues have uh, because the context for this conversation has already been set very eloquently from, from a collaborations perspective um, set out by M uh, and, and, and Esposito, from a farm level perspective set out by Chi, uh, from a legal perspective uh, covered by Maureen of Aripo, so I'll, I'll go straight from to, to, to what I think uh, is a uniquely HIVA perspective. So as we sit in the third decade of the 21st century, um, Africa is uh, quite a dynamic space right now. Unlike other decades, um, we're listening to ourselves, we're enjoying our music, we're watching our films, we like how we sound, there's growing enthusiasm, there's dynamism amongst uh, um, young and old people um, who are celebrating being themselves, being African uh, across the region. A few decades back, um, the, the story was different. We just had uh, a few uh, upstarts who, who were celebrated in continents away from ours by people um, who necessarily don't consume uh, works from them. But now if you look uh, at every genre of work, whether it's music, um, whether it's film, whether it's uh, fashion, gaming, uh, interior and home design, uh, toys and crafts, literature, there's, there's a renaissance happening. But this renaissance is driven by many uh, young, uh, fledgling businesses um, that are run by, by individuals who are self-financed, who have quit a formal job to start uh, a side hustle, and, 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 and there are countless, even thousands and hundreds of thousands across cities, across um, the continent. In my view, um, any artistic production, any renaissance, in any dynamism or whatever reading we are having of the continent, uh, the reading could be called Nollywood or Bongo Wood. Uh, the reading could be called uh, um, Kwaito 
or 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 or, or deep house, uh, African house, safari house, whatever reading we we assign to this renaissance is driven by individuals who are mostly obscure from uh, public sector finance uh, because only a few countries uh, invest. Uh, taxpayers' money in supporting creative production directly. And this is the likes of the, of the MENA facing countries and, and, and South Africa uh, as an example. Uh, and, 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 and very few in between, um, like Kenya and Tanzania, who are, which are smaller economies. But most of our, our resource is self-financed. Uh, if you look at private sector investment, um, the private sector investment that is in Africa doesn't look like um, necessarily like the American version or the European version, where there's a venture capitalist uh, who is interested in a few upshoots and they pump in um, numerous rounds of investment infinitely and then they sell that business. That's a growing genre of money. The money that exists in this economy is bootstrapping money. It's family money, is own financing, own savings. And so we realized in the absence of uh, private sector investment in that organized way, in the commercial sense of things, and in the absence of, um, of uh, government uh, grants and programmatic expenditure, the only people who remained active in that space were the cultural partners, the Gotes, the British councils, the EU, the French, the Portuguese, who had short-term uh, programs that only uh, invested in short-term programs. And so for, for us to think about uh, investment in the third century going forward, in the third decade going forward, we need to create local mechanisms that continue to resource uh, startups that grow into middle, uh, uh, middle tier businesses and that you provide another round of financing that's tailored to, to growth to make these uh, entities grow and create more opportunities and create uh, stable value chains that allow our creative sector to sophisticate. So HIVA is one such example, and I hope that uh, the continent will create as many examples as possible um, of financing mechanisms that respond to local needs. For us, we've been able to invest in over 100 businesses um, in, in more than five genres, uh, providing financing from seed financing uh, to growth financing in numerous models. We are not restricted to debt only. We provide um, um, equity, we provide pseudo equity, mez mezzanine, leases, um, or whatever type of prescription of financing interventions to allow um, our, our fledgling sectors and our growing uh, awareness to, to, to thrive. When we connect this to digital, I would, uh, I would dare say that, um, that as HIVA Fund, we've uh, tested our hand at digital, and this is setting a basis for my intervention. We've um, financed platforms, payment platforms. Payment platforms are critical because how media is consumed, how creative products are consumed, they are consumed on micropayments uh, basis. Um, and we do not have as many credit cards. So this, this is mobile phone uh, based consumption, uh, microtransactions. So platform and payment gateways are important. We also think that uh, distribution platforms shouldn't be only um, the Netflix of our day, however much we like them. We should also create um, local platforms that that understand our language, our vernaculars, and that the algorithms are closer uh, to, our, to our identity and, 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 and our, our thinking. We've invested in gaming and gaming development. Uh, we've, allowed, we've helped businesses that pr make products that are not digital to adopt digital technologies in their inventory management, in their teal, management in their business record uh, management to increase efficiency and um, manage their cash flows better. We've uh, supported festivals and awards that celebrate um, excellence uh, in, in, in digital and digital adoption. 
We've uh, invested in AR and VR um, research uh, through universities and techn technical universities in Kenya and Uganda to allow these technologies to start being used by, by amateurs and students so that they can be localized. We are supporting uh, uh, a university, a college to, uh, to do a, an animation lab and, 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 and we can go on and on around, um, around our portfolio of investments uh, thanks to our partners in Europe uh, and our partners local. But what is important is to, to start to recognize that um, there is technology, then there's creative technology, and then there's human uh, interactions in technology. And these are all interventions that are critical to allow um, sort of a, a sustainable digital adoption. When we think about deep tech, uh, uh, this is where we need more skills around, around programming, coding, artificial intelligence, um, NFTs and blockchain kind of things. And, and these are critical tools for the future of creative industries. I'll give you an example. Um, if you want to listen to a playlist on, um, on uh, Spotify of women only, women musicians in Africa, I don't think there's an algorithm that can find you uh, amazing women music from, from the continent. Someone needs to figure out deep tech that understands that kind of um, uh, uh, music business. On the, on the, on the, on the, on the create tech side, uh, other than just the deep tech, we need, we need more people to play around with uh, AR and VR um, animation, gaming development, micro content development, because that is the front facing side of, um, of uh, technology and as far as uh, audiences are concerned. But on mm -hmm. the, uh, I, I, have I finished my five minutes? Yeah, well, we, we're one minute over right now, but just finish up and then we'll, you know, it's, you're yeah. right, by the way, in terms of deep tech, so yeah. Yes, and, 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 and so to speak, I would say that, um, that we cannot ignore the place of technology in, in the future of the evolution of creative industries in Africa, given that Africa is mobile first, Africa is average 19 year olds, uh, we have in uh, the eastern side we have 650 million 19 year olds, uh, those are digital natives, and so as HIVA Fund, we are deliberate around uh, moving resources, uh, experimental resources, uh, tailored resources towards uh, ventures that can be able to take small bites of this big challenge. Thank you. I think that you, you, you summarized it. First off, you know, we could chat for a, a lot longer than, than 45 minutes um, uh, together on this. But, you know, this is an incredibly young, uh, digital, you know, uh, internet, digital natives, um, very, you know, there's such huge opportunities in digital technologies and the creative economy in Africa, uh, let alone in the entire world. So long as we invest in digital and invest in culture, like we invest in any other sector. So I want to thank you guys so much. I got, I got one question over to each of you. So um, we got there. Um, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, for all the um, all the audience that wants to learn more, um, please obviously visit everyone's websites. And um, and Patrick, I'm going to hand it back to you to close us out. Thank you, Shane. Thank you so much, and thank you to all the panelists and uh, and the participants. Um, I see this is a large group, and this is a large topic with a big potential for development. And I see here a big family. So um, I'm in the family of the creative economy. So I'd like to ask you, in fact, to switch on your camera so we can take um, a picture of uh, all of us. It will be the, the family picture. And uh, in, in the meantime, I'd like to give the opportunity to Frédéric and uh, Mio, whether they are still here, and uh, uh, to, to say a few words at the end. So Frédéric first, and then Mio, you will be welcome to, to conclude. Frédéric, over to you. Thank you, Patrick. And thank you, dear panelists. This was really amazing. Um, I would briefly like to maybe um, point out a few issues that we can um, take forward or how, how we can actually move forward. 
Um, before I do that, let me start with two good pieces, pieces of good news. One, I think, is that the creative industries are on the rise. Uh, we started a few years ago with first studies on the orange economy, so-called orange economy. Um, and here we are with a UN year, International Year on Creative um, Industries, plus, for example, the G20 have also um, included culture now in, um, in their uh, agenda. Uh, and this understanding that was also shared by um, uh, Maria Chiara Esposito uh, is uh, to, to um, combine culture and sustainable development and to actually see how it can contribute to economic development, how it can contribute to um, even climate change and how are you actually, sorry, I think we have a noise here. Um, so uh, with that in mind, um, the other good news is, of course, that um, we can use this whole um, digital world to our advantage, that we can actually come together in the, di in the digital world. Um, I think, sorry, we have an alarm going off here right now in the office. Um, I will try to ignore it. I hope it's not too disturbing. Um, let me just briefly acknowledge, uh, George, what you said uh, from the HEVA Fund. We are partners. We cooperate together in Kenya. Um, you will be actually um, organizing a business training for 90 creative entrepreneurs um, for us. Um, and I totally agree what you say uh, on, um, on having more vernacular platforms, vernacular films in Africa, and to um, get those female African musicians on Spotify. Um, and many of these measures that we're taking now are really first aid to the sector um, because of uh, the corona pandemic. So we need to keep that in mind that we need to bring together the funds with the training. Um, we also, we work with the African Digital Media Institute uh, in, in Kenya, where we actually um, uh, help mus musicians bring their work to digital platforms. And I'd like to quote Shane again, a song can be a pension that is um, a very good way to put it. And finally, let me just say, what could be the way forward? Um, I think we need a political initiative at the UN level. So perhaps this international year of creative industries could actually um, be finalized with a roadmap of how to take this whole um, topic and sector further in order to generate more political commitment. Um, I would also suggest a pilot project to collect data. I very much agree with the colleague who said we need more data to make our case, to make the argument with ministers of finance and economy. Um, and that pilot project should also um, help a few partners to implement specific policies in the creative sector, like, for example, establishing film funds. We worked with the Kenyan Film Commission on this idea already. Um, we need to bring in the private sector. So perhaps there could be a private sector forum organized by UNCTAD, or even better, why not bring the topic of creative industries to the World Economic Forum? And of course, we need to deal with trade barriers. And uh, I'm looking towards the EU for that um, with respect to intellectual property. I will stop here now, and I, I apologize very much if there's if you can hear the noise in the background. It's, it's, an, it's an alarm going off, I think. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, you. you. thank you. Thank you so much. And I'd like to give the, the, the last word to Mio from Montal. Mio, over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much and thank you for everyone for a very exciting discussion and uh, it was really nice that there are so many actual activities on the ground and at this stage I just would like to say that as we all know that this year is the International Year of Creative Economy. Once again I just shared the link for the, the website. As you know that there, this is a kind of the reservoir of so many ideas and initiatives, activities uh, or related to the create International Year of Creative Economy, you can find them. And I just would like to thank Mr. Helscher for an excellent idea for, you know, to conclude this International Year, to come up with some concrete roadmap and to enhance. It's not really to do a new thing, but I think what we really need to do is to enhance this horizontal network, the stakeholder network, to bring things together and I'm sure there are some challenges and maybe already some solutions or answers are existing somewhere else. We are just not connected. So on this note, um, once again, I want to thank you very much. And uh, make, I'm sure that this is a concrete step for our continuing collaboration in this very important subject. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is the beginning of the cooperation and uh, I once again thank uh, so much uh, all the panelists and all the participants um, to, uh, for this uh, session. Thank you and have a good day. Bye-bye.